Dear brothers and sisters, the saints in Christ, welcome to a new episode. This is our third episode for the series about the allegation by Pope Shenouda and also uh, Father Dood Lame that St. Paul was ordained as a priest by St. Peter in the book of Acts. And also we are going to answer the, uh, uh, the verse of Roman uh, chapter 15, verse 16. Uh, this would be more than enough for, for this, although there are so many other stuff who can uh, prove that St. Paul was not uh, ordained or uh, by, by, by St. Paul. You will notice it at all times when uh, uh, St. Paul in his epistles normally says, Paul is like uh, an apostle, not by men, not by people, but by Jesus Christ. So he assured many times that he was not ordained by any man or uh, anyone appointed him as whatever, but actually he is an apostle by uh, the Lord Jesus himself, as we know that is in the book of uh, uh, Acts chapter 9. In the previous two episodes, uh, we proved that all the, uh, the times when uh, Paul met those who are considered as the pillars, especially Paul, uh, Peter. Uh, there was nothing like ordination or anything like that. Also, we found also uh, the, uh, uh, the structure of the church, whether it is in Jerusalem or in Antioch. Uh, there was no priests at all, but we found apostles, we found uh, elders, we found prophets, and we found some deacons and found teachers, but not uh, priests at all. Uh, the third thing, that last episode, we saw that the laying on of hands on uh, Paul and uh, uh, Barnabas was by the Holy Spirit uh, assigning them a new job that is the international or overseas missionary job. In this episode, we'll cover two points, uh, like uh, a contention between Peter and Paul in Antioch, and also uh, the verse of Roman 5, 16, uh, 15, 16, sorry. So let's now read the contention between uh, Paul and Peter. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, that was about nearly 4950 AD, by the way, I uh, withstood him, him is Peter, uh, to his face because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, like from uh, Jerusalem, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, those people from Jerusalem, when they came, he withdrew and he separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. Those are the ones came from the Jews that came from Jerusalem to Antioch. And he rested. And the rest of Jews also played the hypocrite with him. So even the Jews in Antioch began also to join him and the Jews from Jerusalem and not to eat with the Gentiles that in Antioch. So that even Barnabas himself was carried away with their hypocrisy. So what happened? All the Jews now, Peter and the Jews of Jerusalem, because of the Jews that came from Jerusalem, together with the Jews in that in Antioch and even Barnabas, they began to be separated from the Gentiles in Antioch. So Paul said, oh my goodness, how come that we agreed that we are one church, now we are going to split the church again. This is hypocrisy. So what Paul did? Uh-huh. Let's see. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to whom? To Peter, the one considered as a pillar. And where? Before them all. So he approached, he, he blamed him openly. If you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles, normally you do, and not as Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews then? Uh, this Galatian, Galatia chapter 2. So he found, after they agreed that there is no difference, we are one church, Peter began to be scared of the Jews came from James, from Jerusalem, and he began to separate himself. 
the rest of the Jews began to separate. Even Barnabas began to separate. Now that situation will come again to a separation. So what happened? So Paul rebuked, blamed Peter openly in front of everyone. I wanted from this uh, passage to show this is also a situation where Paul and Peter were there. So he did not ordain him, but in fact, Paul was blaming Peter for a hypocrisy behavior, which is a shame. Okay. So now we finished so far in, enough. I think we covered every situation where there was a sort of meetings or interview or uh, 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 where Peter and Paul were together. So there was no uh, uh, ordination, nothing at all. So when they... Uh, when he says uh, that Paul was ordained, and he says, even it is very obvious in the uh, 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 in the in the book of Acts, he was ordained. No, that is not true. This is a deception. Let's watch the uh, uh, the short clip, then we we'll come and uh, comment on it. الأوضح من كده كمان في سفر الأعمال يقول لنا أنه لما بولس اتحط عليه اليد بقى عبده هو سلطان كهنوتي فنسمع بعدها على طول أنه ابتدى هو نفسه يرسم أسوس يرسم كهنة يبقى العملية ممتدة لما أصبح بولس أسقف بيد بطرس والمعتبرين الأباء الأوائل أصبح بولس عنده سلطان كهنوتي أنه في كل بلد يمسح قصوصا أو يرسم قصوص فأصبح واضح أن في ردبة اسمها القصوص ترشم بيد من هو أعلى في وقتها الرسل أو الأسقف يعني بيقولها في رسالة روميا كاكاهن لكن برضو حد من المعترضين قال ما هو كاكا في التشبيه هو أنا لما أقول أنا ككاهن يبقى بشبه نفسي بكاهن ولا أنا كاهن فعلا فأنا بقول صفتي صفتي الـ 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 الكيانية لما دكتور يقول أنا كطبيب رأيي هو مش بيقول كأني طبيب هو أنا كطبيب حياتي كده فبولس بيقول أنا أقدم القرابين ككاهن عن الأمم لأنه طبعا كان بيعمل قداس واضحة جدا فعملت 19 يوم أفتيخس وقع وبعدين كسر الخبز وبعدين أفتيخس قام حي إذا بولس كان عامل قداس We come now to the uh, to the verse of uh, Roman 15-16 that I might be a minister because this word minister in Arabic was mentioned a priest as a priest exactly that's why there is a problem with the Arabic translation but not with the English but anyway the reason I'm doing this episode also in English because if you're attending your church the Orthodox Church you will notice they will be say, they will be saying uh, uh, St. Paul was a, was a priest. And of course, you, you would be like confused where is he's a priest. So they would say it's in Romans 15, 16. So you might think that the word minister is wrongly uh, interpreted, but in fact, it is the per, uh, minister is the proper interpretation of the Greek word, word as we'll see. So just I would like to, call, to make sure that you, uh, if someone tells you, uh, Romans 15, 16 mentioned that Paul is a priest, tell him no, it is not because... Uh, because of the Greek language that will come. Minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so let's uh, explain this. First of all, the word is minister, is not a priest. Secondly, let's go to the Greek word. The Greek word is liturgos, liturgos. And liturgos means, according to the uh, strong uh, dictionary, it says a worker in a temple, a worshipper, benefactor of man, minister. And this word actually came five times in the New Testament. I'll take two examples as witnessing. One of them is Hebrews chapter 8, verse 2. It's, it talks about Jesus Christ. A minister of sanctuary. So the word liturgos is a minister of sanctuary, not a priest, and of the true tabernacle. Also, as we mentioned, 
uh, in the book, in, in the uh, uh, strong uh, dictionary, it says also the word liturgos could be used also as benefactor. So let's now see, benefactor is a person that offering a lot, helping someone. So let's read this one. Uh, when the word also liturgos came in, it is in the uh, uh, Philippians, Epistle of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 25. Yet I considered it necessary to send you Epaphrodites, my brethren, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who ministered to my need. The word minister to my need was uh, in, in, in Greek is liturgos. So just I wanted to, to mention two out of the five that the word liturgos uh, is not a, a priest at all and these are two examples of, of it. Now let's go to the uh, third uh, 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 refutation. This word liturgos never mentioned in the New Testament as priest at all. The word priest is totally different word. It is yeros or erefs as they, as they mention in, 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 in their uh, 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 alhan when, when they mention that the Pope is called Arshi Erefs. They call it him like, like, like the, the high priest. So, but they never mentioned Arshi Liturgos, not not Liturgos. Okay. Also, the word Eros is the only word mentioned in the New Testament and the translated priest. This is the word is given to Jesus as a priest. The word was given to Zacharias, Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, as a priest. It is the same word that was given to the priests and the high priests that were uh, judging Lord Jesus. Also, it is the same word. I mean, talking about Eros or Erefs as they, as they, they pronounce it. Also, it is given to the uh, all believers as kings and priests. So, liturgos never ever translated priest in the New Testament. So, we cannot say when it is mentioned here in, in uh, Romans 15, 16, it is not a priest. It is a minister as it is in English. Uh, uh, now I come to another point. Is this the only point, or the only time, sorry, where Paul describes his ministry as sacrifice? No. Why am I asking, I'm saying this? I would like to read the verse once, one more time. Romans 15, 16. Please, now focus with me. That I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles, what is the offering of the Gentiles? Their faith, he considers his service, as we will read soon, by John Chrysostom, he considers the offering of the Gentiles as a, a, an offering, might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So, out of the whole verse, now we can say he considers his service as a sacrifice offering offered to God. This is not the only uh, time. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 17, he says the same thing about his service for the Philippian uh, church. Yes, and if, if I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. So again, here, St. Paul describes the faith, uh, the, sacrifice, the service of the faith of the Philippians as a sacrifice, and he considers himself, himself as the drink offering. You know the drink offering? If you read the Old Testament, you'll find that some occasions, the offering or the sacrifice, the Lord ordered that they, they pour a certain amount of wine on the sacrifice, and it's considered as an aroma uh, to the Lord. So he, in the Philippians 1, he considers himself the wine 
that poured or it's called the drink offering is poured on the sacrifice and service of your face. I would like to just to, from this to confirm the following that St. Paul is considering his service as a sacrifice and accordingly he is considering himself as figur figur figuratively, allegorically as the priest offering the sacrifice to the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? This is actually what the Bible says, and it will be explained in detail by St. John the Chrysostom when they come to this point. So, uh, uh, the, uh, the word minister, or the, uh, uh, that in, in, in Romans, uh, that was wrongly translated as a priest, but uh, it was actually as a priest from a, a, a metaphorical uh, presentation, to uh, like to go with uh, the service of Paul as a sacrifice to the Lord. Okay, next one. If they say Paul is a priest, how come he ordains bishops? Because he ordained many people, like give example, Timothy and Titus, and they are considered bishops. Does it make sense? And if we say he's a bishop, two things here, got two problems. Number one, the verse doesn't say he bishop. Number two, a bishop cannot ordain a bishop. So this means what? If he ordains a bishop, this means he should be a pope, a patriarch. But in fact, the verse does not say he is a patriarch. Then what is the problem? The problem is twisting the verse, trying to get the verse uh, in the wrong, uh, the wrong interpretation of the verse. So, in fact, the word as a priest, it was just a metaphorical thing, representing himself, I am like a priest, offering you, Gentiles, as sacrifice to the Lord to be acceptable and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. This is the whole thing. Okay, let's come now to another one, another uh, issue. It is, I would say, it's a KO, this one. St. Paul himself says, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17. So we've got two problems here. Either St. Paul is not a priest, because they, they say baptism is the job of the priest. It is not according to the Bible, but this is what they say. But I'm thinking now what they say. So if they say baptism is part of the tasks of the priest, and St. Paul says, but Christ did not send me to baptize. This means Paul was not a priest. Or the other option is, baptism is not a task of priests. If you would like to insist that Paul was a priest, and he was, he, he was ordered by Jesus not to baptize, this means baptism is not one of the tasks of priests. So, in fact, now you are in this, uh, I would say, vicious circle. You cannot get out of it. And the only thing is, you can't get out of it, you put yourself in the trouble by trying to prove your priesthood from this world. Because even, uh, as we mentioned, uh, I think la last episode, or the, yeah, last episode, or the, or the one before, that Pope Shenouda, in during his era, or at least the first half of it, he used to say that Protestant forged the Bible by changing the word the priest into elder so, but what, what what about this one he, it is mentioned as uh, uh, as a priest so they did not change it so the conclusion so far saint paul was not ordained so, number two he can if he's a priest he cannot ordain an, uh, a, a bishop so how can he ordain a bishop he could not number three an, uh, 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 a bishop cannot uh, cannot ordain a bishop so he must be a patriarch so, but in fact, the, the verse says he is a priest. So, does it work? Number two, or number three, or... St. Paul himself said, but Christ did not send me to baptize. This means either he was not a priest, or baptism is not a priesthood task. So, which one will you will choose? So, you, you're stuck there. You're stuck. You put yourself into trouble. But the problem, actually, not the deceiving. The problem, actually, when people believe them. Use your head, guys. Go and read the Bible on your own. Okay. 
Now, let's come to a severe KO. They keep all the time saying we don't understand the Bible by our own, like the Protestants, so we have so many uh, denominations. We understand the Bible as the fathers explained it. Okay? Good. Has any of the fathers explained this verse? Absolutely. One who is very highly regarded, John Chrysostom explained or has a big commentary by the way on the book of Romans and he explained this verse but before we watch him or read what what he said let's first read what Pope Shenouda wrote in his book about this verse then we see what John Chrysostom said about this book about this verse okay so now in the in his book Priesthood by Pope Shenouda, page 27, Romans 15, 16. He is defending like the priesthood by using this one. He says that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. This is the verse. Here, this is Pope Shenouda says that. Here we see St. Paul ministering the offering of the Gentiles in his capacity as a priest. And if so, he can. how can someone say the human priesthood should be no more? I understand the translation itself is confusing. Anyway, I'll continue and I'll come back again to you. Some Arabic speaking evangelical brethren try to play on the words. In fact, he is the one playing with the words. By using the literal sentence construction to claim that St. Paul was not calling himself a minister or a priest. Anyway, even if he literally is saying, I proclaim a gospel of God as a minister of Christ, he does not mean that he is, uh, he is pretended a priest. I understand even the translation is, is very confusing because it is based on a wrong word in Arabic that St. Paul is a priest. But anyway, to give you the conclusion of the issue, you, because I understand in, our, in English you don't have an issue, but because you attend to the Coptic Church, they believe that St. Paul is a priest. That's why I have to confute this, to explain this, to, to reveal the truth. Okay? Now, let's see what uh, St. John Chrysostom says in his book. John Chrysostom, page 377. For after his abundant proof of his, of his statement, he draws his discourse to a more lofty one, not speaking of mere service as in the beginning, but of service and the priestly ministering, liturgion, he puts it in, in, uh, in Greek. For to me, this is priesthood. What is priesthood? This preaching and the declaring. This is the sacrifice I bring. This is what St. Paul says, uh, St. Uh, John Chrysostom. So St. John Chrysostom explains to the, to the minister of Jesus Christ, to the Gentiles ministering, uh, so he explains that St. Paul here is talking not about the service but about his ministry considering it as, as a sacrifice. I bring now one will find fault with a priest for being anxious to offer the sacrifice without blem blemish. And he says this at once to elevate uh, Petrotrin their thoughts and show them that they are sacrifice. So St. Paul is talking to the Gentiles as you are the sacrifice and I am like a priest offering you. I'm offering you to the Lord uh, as uh, acceptable sacrifice uh, consecrated by the Holy Spirit and I, in doing this I'm, I look like a priest. And in apology and in apology for 
his own part in the matter because he was appointed to his office for my life, he, he says, is the gospel. The word of the preaching and the cause is not that I may be glorified, not that I may appear conspicuous, but that the offering up prosphora. Prosphora means uh, uh, offering. Of the Gentiles may be acceptable being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. That's the whole thing. So the conclusion of this uh, series is number one, St. Paul was not ordained as uh, as uh, Father Dood Lama says in the book of Acts. He could not get even whereabout in the book of Acts he was ordained as a priest. No. So unfortunately, sorry, he was deceiving you guys. That's it. Full stop. Secondly, this verse uh, doesn't show that he is a priest, but they have taken it. Now, my, 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 my very important comment is, if they say that we understand the Bible as the fathers explained it, what about this verse? You bring your own, your very own deception as explanation of this verse to prove that there is uh, the job of priesthood in the New Testament, which is, which is not true. And you left the, the proper interpretation of this verse by saying John Chrysostom. So when you say we are un explaining or understanding the Bible as the Father says, you are deceiving people. Because you say this slogan, but in fact you, you put your own deception as we have seen in this verse. Shall I repeat this again? You have the, this slogan and you keep like... Uh, uh, crying and uh, all the time we don't uh, we interpret the, uh, the Bible on our own so we are like the Protestant but we interpret it the way we uh, uh, received from the fathers okay what about this one now is your interpretation coincide with the interpretation of St. John the Chrysostom absolutely not this means what lying and deception full stop okay Thank you very much for your time. Unless the Lord comes again, we'll meet again in another episode to continue the series of priesthood as an answering for uh, both uh, Pope Shenouda and Father Dudlamay. May the Lord bless you all. Thank you. God bless you.